Hello folks, thanks for joining me again and if this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. Um, following on from the um, previous video, um, I did go ahead and put cladding in that area. I think it just breaks it up nice. I think I'll probably either stain it or maybe it's just varnish it. Um, but we'll see once I get to it. And I also built a shelf unit to go above it. Um, it's made from 18mm ply for the sides and the front bar. 12mm uh, for the base, 6 for the rear panel and that's, a, I believe it was a 37mm uh, wooden batten as well just to give it a bit extra support and that's what I used to screw into the ceiling into the uh, cross cross beams I also boxed in the, um, the trunk in that goes across the top of the door using some cladding the two holes that were there, that's for the uh, where the, uh, the solar um, controllers and things are going to go and then I made a, a box um, this is going to sit just inside the door this is going to be one side of the um, the front bed area it's going to have removable uh, bed frame which will store in one of the cupboards it's got a sliding top on it as well and I put a leg on it as well just to give it a bit of support that's made out of 18mm um, ply and it tips up as well. I'm going to use this for storing boots and wellies so I intend um, lining it with a, a pond liner uh, just because it's a nice thick rubbery um, material that will stop the mud going all over the van and I put a shelf between the two top boxes at the rear the base is 12mm the front bar there is 18mm and the rear is 6mm all ply it's just the rear view of it. And that was the, all the building I've done so far. Um, and then it was time to start painting eventually. Um, so I actually had um, these four cupboard doors. These are for the top cupboards at the rear. Uh, I've got three drawer fronts to do. Um, a flip down piece on, that goes underneath the drawers two doors for the uh, kitchen unit area the toilet door and the tall cupboard door as well so there's an awful lot of doors I had to do and I'm doing both sides as well so it took me an absolute age to do um, here I'm just um, putting on some size the size is made from 50% PVA glue and 50% water and it just seals the wood um, when it dries, sometimes on wood you get the, the grain stands up after it's got wet and if you do this it gives you a chance to sand it off you shouldn't get any grain standing up on ply but just in case you do um, it's a good way of sailing it and I did inside the drawers um, outside of the, the drawers um, you can see the drawer fronts on there I actually took them off and decided to paint them separately just so I didn't end up with paint all over the sides of the drawers. And you need to make, pay particular attention to the edges, just to make sure you've got plenty on. In fact, sometimes it's a good idea to go over it again on the edge pieces. And you just by rubbing your hand across, you'll soon feel if any of the grains lifted. Now, I've already put the first coat of undercoat on here, and I'm just giving it a light sand. I'm using, um, I believe it was 200 mil uh, grit, sorry, 200 grit sandpaper, um, and I'm just giving it, giving it good, you know, all over the surface, just giving it a good once over, just very lightly. I'm not putting any pressure on the the sander at all. I'm just letting the weight of it do it, just guiding it across, and then I wiped it down with some water and a rag, just to get rid of all the dust. Wiped everything down, got rid of all the dust and everything before I started painting again. If you don't get rid of all the dust, you'll just end up with a gritty surface and not a very nice finish at all. And it's a good time to find out where all your tiny little holes are um, that you might have missed. Sometimes when you're painting, the, the paint will fill them, but... Um, it's not a very good idea to fill them with paint, you're far better 
filling them with a bit of wood filler, like I'm doing here. And then when this dried, I just sanded it down again and then gave that another coat of paint. So here's another one wiped out. And this is the paint I'm using. This is an oil-based undercoat. Um, I like oil-based undercoats. I think it gives a good, uh, good seal. And the top coat is, um, as you can see, quick dry eggshell. And this is a water-based. Um, you need if you, if you. I'm going to varnish the paint as well, so just to give it an extra bit of protection, um, and it'll stop any uh, discolouring of the paint as well. And uh, if you're putting varnish on top of paint, you need to remember that you can't mix oil-based paint and oil-based varnish and water-based paint. Um, you need to use a water-based varnish together with the water-based paint, otherwise you'll get a reaction with the paint and you'll end up, it'll just go all soft, which I found out at my cost on a previous occasion. And I'm just using just the weight of the brush here just to go over and smooth the surface. And then once that's dried, I sanded it again, um, wiped it down and now I'm putting the top coat on. It's the same principle as before, just working one area at a time. Just making sure you've got it all covered backwards and forwards and across, across the way as well. Don't just all go in one direction all the time. You're better making about four or five passes over. And then for the top coat, um, I used a roller just to uh, smooth everything out. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. I'm just really using the weight of the roller. This with a very, very light pressure. It just smooths any paint out that you might have missed. I'm using a foam roller here and um, it will leave a little bit of a stipple effect um, but I sanded these down in between the coats anyway and the top coat. If you're not putting varnish on um, the stipple, stipple effect is uh, it's quite a nice finish actually and it's a lot sometimes it's a lot smoother it eliminates any of the brush marks that sometimes you get when you're painting. So I finished all the doors and then I masked up the inside of the van, put plastic everywhere where I thought I was going to get paint on. Covered the floor, so I didn't want to get paint on that. And then I could start painting on the inside, which is something I've been looking forward to do for about nine months. This is just the rear area all masked up. Uh, put uh, masking tape around all the top edges as well and the ceiling. Now I'm just giving the uh, the, do the fronts of sand, same principle as I did with the doors, um, sanding and, va and um, wiping down, then, then coating with the paint eventually. Um, so I'm sizing all the, uh, the interior wood here inside the van. Um, I did everything. I did all the fronts, um, inside the cupboards, um, inside the um, under the cupboard underneath the the, um, the cooker and sink, just to seal all of that. Um, you can see me just doing all the insides here. So it just seals all the wood. Um, and it makes a good uh, finish inside the, the cupboards as well, because it. Um, I'm going to varnish these as well inside. You can see I'm starting varnishing here, the shelf bottoms there. It's. Um, there's nothing worse than having raw wood and getting. Uh, you just look at if you get bits of dust, uh, you know, wood dust. It's, it doesn't matter how often you clean it, if you don't seal it, you will still get dust in it, so you end up with dust all over your clothes. I so did under the sink as well with the varnish inside and um, the side areas. I didn't do the shelves underneath the sink because that'll probably get a lot of uh, traffic. And any areas that weren't going to get any paint, I gave those a, a coat of varnish as well. Just to seal them. 
I didn't do the insides of the uh, cupboard inside of that box because uh, there's only going to be the electrics in there, so it doesn't matter. And then eventually I can start painting. So this is the first coat going on. I'm not going to bore you with the whole process again. Uh, this is just really it's just to show me starting to paint. That's the varnish I used. Um, so now what all the paints dry on these doors and everything. I was actually varnishing in between doing bits in the van as well. And some of the weather wasn't very clever as well with the wind and whatever I couldn't do inside the van so it was an ideal opportunity. And if you're using varnish don't put loads on because it, it goes an awful long way. And you're far better building up a lot of, uh, lot of thin layers than you are just slopping it on because you just end up with a big globby mess if you if you put loads on and try to get it all on in one or two, one coat or two, if you just did like an undercoat, a top coat and the varnish in three coats, you get a far better finish with doing multiple coats. So that's the first coat on. And there's another two coats of varnish to go on after that. At least two. And probably put uh, f the four coats of varnish in the high traffic areas such as on the, um, the the toilet box area. And same principle as I did before, just the very tip of the brush, just using the weight of the brush, basically, just to smooth it all out. And then you have to sand in between each coat as well, just to give it a nice key to get the, the next coat to grip. So here's some outtakes for you from my previous uh, video that I found. Uh, it was from the first video actually that I thought I'd lost it, um, but I found Hi, the outtakes. So I thought you might appreciate channel. these, so I thought I'd stick uh, them on. This series of videos, um, I'll be... So thanks very much for watching again. Hi, um, I hope to see you in the next one. Videos, Take care. I'll be converting my extra long wheelbase VW camper. Sorry. Bloody hell. Hi, my name is Brian. Welcome to the channel. Deepest. Hi, my name is Brian. Welcome to the channel. In this series of videos, I become. Oh, God, my. So, you've got this far. Well done. Now you've got great stamina. Um, I'd like to uh, hear from you if you've got any thoughts on the build. Um, I would appreciate your comments. Um, if you've enjoyed the build, well, you've got this far, well done. Uh, you've got some great stamina. Um, well, you've got if you've got this far, bloody hell.